Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and to video one of our Build Like a Nerd series. Today we are building a Queen and Victorian, which is admittedly probably about a mid-skill range, um, but it is base game only and it was a special request, so. I want to give a quick shout out to everyone who subscribed during the roofing month, um, where I just released a new tutorial every day about roofing. You guys really set this channel just on a whole path I didn't see coming for a couple more years, so I am just blown away with the amount of support. I want to give a special thanks to my beta testers, a couple of you. I didn't ask permission to say your name, so I'm not going to, but you know who you are. You checked out a couple of these videos ahead of time. Let me know I was on the right track. I can't thank you enough for that. And of course, thanks to my family for supporting my crazy dreams of building houses on the internet. My goal of this series is to take various home styles and break them down to help you build not only exactly what you see on screen, but hopefully give you a little insight into what makes each style that particular style. Stuff that will really make your builds feel that much more authentic. Of course, it is The Sims 4. How you build is totally up to you. But if you're looking to up your game with any particular style, I highly recommend subscribing and following along for this journey. The Queen Anne is arguably an American staple. Anywhere that you go in the United States, for the most part, you're going to see homes built in some sort of Victorian style, and the Queen Anne is among the most popular. You're going to see a lot of towers, turrets, bay windows, big windows, small windows. Living spaces tend to be somewhat open. Um, there's not a lot of hallway, but the rooms are all separated by walls and connected by either doors or arches. We'll be building two stories today, although this can be up to three, and this will be a four bedroom build, which is about mid-size. They can be a little smaller, uh, but for the most part this will be on the smaller end. If you're interested in a smaller but similar style build, I'll talk about that later in the video. I am super pumped for this series and this intro has been long enough, so let's get started. I'm starting off at a 20 by 30 lot in Willow Creek today. I believe Strangerville has quite a few Victorian homes, however I don't have that pack, so I will not be building there today. Throughout the series I'm going to do my best to break everything down into rectangles and give you the dimensions I'm using while I'm building, as well as point out areas that you could change dimensions or switch things around. You should end up with an identical build today if you follow along. You could of course tweak it and make it your own, and overall hopefully you'll walk away with a slightly better understanding of the Queen Anne Victorian style and will be able to build your own either from floor plans, reference images, or even just from your imagination. So we're going to start toward the middle of the lot with a 4x4 four four square. We can of course move the lot later on if we need to. This is going to be our entry area. Off the back we are going to add a dining room which will be 4x5 and then off right here we're going to do a 4x6 kitchen. The reason I'm making the kitchen so large is because we'll often have a sort of breakfast table as well, so we want to make sure we have room for that. Go into tiles here, go four tiles over. This is going to be the living room. If you wanted a more spacious living room, you just bring it out a little further. And I'm going to bring this out one tile past our entry. I'm going to add a two by three rectangle right here. And now grab your custom room tool. Start right here. We're going to go down three tiles and make a little octagonal office area. You can hold shift when that green line appears to complete the room automatically. Another useful hack is when you're using the wall tool you can hold control to remove walls, which I'm going to do because I'm going to add the stairs right here. For a Queen Anne this size, stairs would often be off the main entry area or off the main living area. If you had a significantly larger Victorian home, you would find one set of stairs probably wider toward the front and a more narrow set of stairs in the kitchen, which is at the back of the build. Now, of course, to really make this look Queen Anne, we have to add a few more octagons. I'm going to add a little bay window area here, again holding shift to complete the room, and I'm going to add one off the dining room here as well. Once again, use control to remove walls. And there's the layout of our first floor. Two more things before we move on. I'm going to grab a flat square and add a deck off the back here. I'm going to make it two by four so that it just lines up with this little corner. And another staple is a large, probably wrapping around at least one side, deep front deck. Because of these angles, it's going to be really hard to complete this deck with just these pieces. So a much faster way to do that is to use the custom room tool. This way, all you have to do is draw the deck, hold shift, and it's done. Of course, you'll probably want to remove walls or just grab some fencing. Not only is this base game friendly, but if you go up here to styles, you can actually pick Queen Anne right here, which is really cool. So that'll give you some really great options if you feel a little stuck. You don't have to use these options. There are lots of other things you could use, both in the base game and other packs, but if you're new to building, some of these style things can really come in handy. I'm going to be using green as my main accent color, so I'm going to just go ahead and place that fence now to get rid of those walls. 
And that's the first floor pretty much done for now. We'll come back and finish it, but let's finish up the floor plan first. I'm going to grab some stairs. I like to just grab some random sort of default stairs when I'm starting to build and then I'll go through and fix them and make them cooler later. And we're gonna add a switchback so that it fits right in this little alcove right here. I'm going to start in this back corner and draw out to right here, not quite all the way to where we start our little bay window area. Also, allergies are kicking my butt, so I apologize for my voice. I've tried drinking tea and all that, and it doesn't seem to make a difference. And we're going to add a smaller bay window here. Pull across this side, and now we can actually start using rectangles again. So, grab this, draw a little rectangle right there. I'm also going to add a wall here. This is going to be our main bedroom and bathroom. Also going to have a 3x4 bedroom right here. A 2x4 main bath here. Trace in this area to make a third bedroom. This will be the hallway. And then we can just add a wall straight across here to make bedroom number four. This is a house on the smaller side, so the bedrooms are pretty small. If you've ever lived or worked in a Victorian, you're going to notice that they usually have weird shapes involved, which is great fun. If you're like, ah, my rooms aren't rectangles, don't worry, it adds to the charm, I promise. I'm also going to add a little deck right here, which I can just copy and place this one easy peasy. I am going to add a fireplace to the living area. Fireplaces in the Queen Anne style tend to be centered in the build, meaning they're not on the exterior walls. So this is about three tiles, well, four tiles in from this wall. So I am going to add a chimney oops, here. We'll adjust this height as needed when we adjust the roof. So this is the basic shell of a Queen Anne. What you're going to see is most of the living areas will be downstairs, although you may have one or two bedrooms if it's a larger home, and most of the bedrooms will be upstairs on the second and possibly third story. I'm not doing a third story today. Most of the builds in this series will be two floors, um, because if the style allows for more than one floor, I want to make sure I address where the stairs go, because that matters. Again, this is building like a nerd. You're going to get so many useless details. <laughs> Um, but the Queen Anne specifically is generally two, two, three stories tall. You could just stack the stairs um, or add them elsewhere in the second story if you were to add another story. Also, if you wanted to add on to the Queen Anne, just literally just tack a room on. Add some octagons, add the same siding, it's going to look great. Speaking of adding rooms on, you may notice we don't really have any hallways downstairs. The Queen Anne typically has its rooms open one into another, so we'll add a doorway here and here and here and here and here. This allows for greater temperature control, so you don't end up with a bunch of drafty hallways. You can close doors to keep heat in one room or the other. And then upstairs, of course, you will have a hall connecting all of the bedrooms and bathrooms. Fireplaces, again, are more toward the center of the build. Stairs will be off the main entry. If it's a large enough build, you will have a second staircase that will be located most often off the kitchen, which is always at the back of the build. And if you really like the Queen Anne, but this is just too much space, I recommend checking out Queen Anne Cottages. I'm not doing a video on it specifically, but basically imagine this, only a third the size. It'll be one or two bedrooms, one to two stories, a much smaller footprint, but a very similar feel. Let's talk about finishing up the exterior, because right now this looks weird. The Queen Anne will typically be on a fairly significant foundation. I'm going to raise mine up about to here. This I think I'm going to convert into a tower, so I'm just gonna grab this octagon room and place it on top. And now I'm going to start adding a roof. Especially if you don't plan to build with move objects on, I recommend putting on a roof before you add windows. It's just going to make it a lot easier. If I hold the grid here, you can see I'm going to move this out to about four tiles in from the edge of my deck. And I'm going to drop it down all the way and then back up one. To get rid of this little clipping here, I'm going to hold shift and push back, but this overhang is fine. I'll then copy, rotate, and place this on the front of my build. Once again, I want this edge to be in about four tiles from the edge of my deck, and I'm only pushing it over this far because if I bring it over the rest of the way and then pull this eave out, it's going to clip in here, and if I push it back, then we're going to have a gap. Now, you could take advantage of this gap and add a balcony on the front. I'm not going to do that today. I do have videos on how to do that elsewhere though, and we'll be doing it in later builds as well. But for simplicity's sake, we are just going to stick to just the one back upper balcony today. So now that this is all sorted out, we need to add our little corner piece here. I'll be using the half-hipped roof. Also, if you want to learn more about roofing in general, I have a playlist of 32, at last count, um, roofing videos. So most of your roofing questions can probably be answered there. 
and that's how we're going to roof our corner. You can move the grid between floors by holding shift and page up or page down. Console players, unfortunately, I just cannot remember your cheats off the top of my head, um, but I do recommend learning some of them because on PC at least they are extremely handy and I imagine they'd be the same for you. Now, I know this roof is going to look complicated, but we are just going to be leaving everything at the default pitch, so hopefully that will ease some of your fears. Anybody can roof, I promise. We started with the largest possible portion with a gable roof. Queen Anne's are typically going to have a lot of open-faced gables where you actually see the triangle showing. Now we don't want to have this eave overhang here though, so what we're going to do is push this back to one tile, hold shift to pull this eave back, then copy, place it again, push this in, we need this eave back though, and then pull it back to meet up. That gets rid of that awkward eave clipping there, and it creates a lovely front-facing, well, rear-facing gable. We can add an octagon right here, that would fit just fine. However, it's not uncommon for these to be gables as well. Personally, I prefer the look of the octagon, but you could definitely do a gable. This is slightly more common when it's just a one-story tower, because then you'll add columns going down to the ground. This one, we would not be adding columns that's a little tall. And now we're going to do the exact same thing on this part of the build right here going to place our roof, push it back to one tile, and then hold shift to pull that one eave back. Copy, push this eave in, and pull out. That gets rid of our little clipping through eave. Up here, we're just going to grab an octagon and pull those eaves out one, and there's your roof. I keep accidentally zooming into like the goth's house and then it makes it blurry, but oh nope, I missed a piece. Alright, we still need to cover this back balcony here, so let's just copy one of our deck roof pieces and put it into place. I'm going to hold shift to push this eave in, and then if you want this to line up even better, you can hold alt to adjust the roof ever so gradually like that. And now we have our fully roofed Queen Anne Victorian. Typically a Queen Anne's roof will be pitched around the default pitch. Um, you might go a little higher, a little lower, but this is about the zone you want to be in going to work on finishing up the exterior now, first with siding, then we'll do windows and columns and roof trims and all that good stuff. Now if you're someone who likes bright colors and bold patterns, Queen Anne Victorians, or really any Victorian, is going to be the style for you. The Victorians were all about showing off their wealth in the most outrageous ways possible, and a lot of that came down to the exteriors of their homes. We're talking bright colors, we're talking siding, we're talking paneling, we're talking stucco, brick, stone, pretty much anything you could get your hands on. It's not uncommon to have multiple textures all in one home, and you're pretty much going to want to go with a nice bright color. Of course, you do you. I'm not going to report you to the style police if you don't. Most homes that you'll see today probably will be more of a dull color, because that's just sort of what most homes are sided in these days, but if you find any sort of restorative homes, or if you look at original sort of images, you're going to see a lot more bright colors. I'm going to go with this slightly wider siding in this bright color. It's a little pale, but I do plan on adding some green columns and everything, and that will really bring the color level up. If I wanted to add some more texture to this build, I might add something like stone through here, if we were in a world where stone was a common building material. A lot of homes also would have shingles, although shingle is like a whole subset of Victorian as well, which I will be talking about on the 22nd. Bricks are another common texture to use. But for the sake of simplicity today, I'm just going to stick with the siding. I will put some brick on my chimney and change out to a brick foundation. If you're looking for a way to use these foundations with the fancy diamonds, this would probably be a great style for it. However, I hate that they don't line up properly, so I never use it. Next up, let's talk windows. Once again, you can go into styles and actually grab Queen Anne, and that's going to give you quite a few options. You don't have to use these options, but again, if you're just looking for some general inspiration or if you're new to the style, using some of these sort of style selector tools in the game can be really helpful. I want to add a little more color to my exterior, so I'm going to grab this in the green swatch and start adding it in a few key areas. Primarily in the living room, here, in the dining room, and it just occurred to me you can't see where the grid is, so I'll put that back on. I'm also going to place it in my kitchen, just on the one wall, and on the upper story here. I am not going to add another window in the kitchen here because I want to make sure I have at least one wall open for cabinets, and the other walls will have doors in them, but I will add another window to my office. Unless you turn on move objects, you're not going to be able to fit these windows on the top story, and we don't really have any windows here that I like, so 
I'm going to grab the classic casement. It has a matching swatch, so I will just grab that to place in these areas. And it has a short version as well, right here, so I can place that right there. Because of how the walls line up on the second story, I'm going to keep with these windows up here. I'm going to center these with this roof piece, and I'm going to add a window up here. I just think that they look empty without one. This side of the house isn't quite as elegant, but I'm okay with that. We'll add a tree or something. Next up, doors. I am using the medium height wall here, so I will use a medium height door. Once again, I'm going to sort of match the same style that I have going everywhere else, the same color, and grab this door here. Once again, you can sort of sort by style and it'll give you a handful of options. I'm also going to use this door to make it have a kitchen entrance over off the deck here. Access to this deck here, as well as on the second story. I just did a quick adjustment to make my windows actually the same height as the door. And now we'll start adding some columns. You could add a column that's pretty simple like this, or go for something a little more ornate. Either one would work just fine. I'm more of a simple person myself, so I think I'll stick with this one today. You may or may not find columns on corners for this style. I will be putting them on the corners that connect to the balconies, but not the others. You do you, but that is an option. You can hold shift to place multiple columns. And if I adjust the window and the columns like this, this actually ends up being nicely framed, so I think I'll do that. Now let's talk about spacing. I'm more concerned with framing the other architectural aspects of this house than I am with symmetry. Um, for some build styles, symmetry is more important than others, and with Queen Anne, it's not. So that's delightful. Add some green stairs here. These could be narrow or wide, but you're pretty much going to want to line up with that front door there. And now we just have to duplicate this on the back. I'm going to add columns here, and then same placement on the floor above. I'm going to add my same fence, same stairs, and grab this brick paint to make sure that the underside of the stairs matches the foundation. Now as far as roofing goes, you're pretty much just going to stick with shingles. Personally, I pretty much always prefer the look of darker shingles, so that's what I'll be going with. And I will not be using my classic square roof trim. I use this pretty much everywhere I can, however, it's a little bit too modern for the Queen Anne, so instead I'm going to be using my beveled out roof trim. I'm using white because it matches with a lot of the other things on my build. However, if you were using wood encased windows, you'd probably want to use a wooden roof trim. I think the last thing to do is finish up the chimney, and right now this is looking a little tall, so what I'm going to do is grab some half walls. I'm going to use the 2.0 version, use the replace option, and then when I hold shift and enclose that room, it keeps the same paint. I'll remove that ceiling. I guess I should probably paint the inside. And then I can grab this chimney, this chimney, <laughs> and place it in. Half wall trims can be found here if you want to change it out. And I think that's about it for the exterior. We've added our columns, our fences, we have lots of windows letting in tons of light, large windows where possible, symmetry is about the least important thing to us right now, and we're ready to move inside. Once again, let's talk doors. If you want to stick with the Queen Anne options that the game suggests, you'll be having a lot of closed doors like this. If you wanted a slightly more open feel, you could grab some windowed doors, or forgo the doors altogether and grab an arch. Which you pick is going to depend on how old and how fancy and how open you want your overall build to feel. And of course you can always have a variety. I'm going to be using some windowed doors off of the main entry area here, but I think between the rooms I'm going to stick with arches. And of course we can't forget our little office. Upstairs, just pick doors that feel good to you. Typically you will have some panels on the doors. I'll be going I think with this one. I am going to add a little bit of safety railing around the stairs here, and I should be able to match the stair railing as well, which is just always a good feeling. Now inside you're going to be looking at a lot of wooden floors, so pick which one you like. As far as wall colors, just like the outside, you're probably going to end up with a lot of brighter colors, and you're definitely going to want to have some trims. So maybe we'll have a nice yellow with these trims on the top and bottom of the wall in here. Possibly something with a bit of a chair rail feel in the dining room, and so on. Now let's see what we can do in the kitchen. I'm going to be using the escargot counters today. Counters pretty much are going to depend on your budget, but if you're able to go with something with wood, I would recommend doing that. 
I have quite a large kitchen here and I'm leaving this wall open for a kitchen table which I could fit a two by one or possibly just a square one in here, no problem. And we can see that the windows are clipping into the counter. Now, a quick tip for fixing this without having to turn on any sort of cheats is to hit F5 and then you can actually move your windows on quarter tiles. So we can just scooch those up a tad and there we go. In order to match up with the height of the rest of the windows on this wall, I'm just going to move this one up and that should look just fine. This one's under a deck so it's sort of disguised that it's not at the same height. I will of course add some upper cabinets. And if you want to have even more of a cabineted feel, you can add a second row on top if you are in the medium wall height. Really, it's not an exact science. You will most likely have some sort of secondary entrance out of the kitchen, either onto the front porch or onto the back, although I have the back entry off of the dining area here. And you're probably going to have some sort of island or kitchen table in the kitchen. In this particular build, both of the bathrooms are upstairs. That's not necessarily standard or not. It's just what um, fit for the more compact floor plan I was trying to put together for you guys today. And there's really no right or wrong way to lay these out. I would probably go for this tub just for style reasons, but whatever fits for you is going to work just fine. A toilet and a sink and a mirror are probably going to be recommended. Really just whatever fits the rest of the style you're going for for this house. If you want your Queen Anne to feel a little less old and a little more like a new construction, one of the easiest things to do is to just change out the wallpapers. Switching to something more neutral and without the trims will immediately help the place feel more modern. And changing out the more ornate arches for something more square, or even opening them up further by adding spandrels. I wouldn't recommend taking out the walls entirely, just because part of the Queen Anne charm is the more segmented feel of the floor plan, but of course, once again, you do you. The Sims 4 doesn't really have any rules, um, so you can just do whatever makes your little building heart happy. Now what about this tower? You have a couple of options here. First, you could just remove the floor and give this room a little extra light, or you could grab a ladder and add that. Now you have a little extra living space up here. I think that it works on the diagonal tiles like this. Because I've done this a handful of times, uh, but if it does not, you can rotate the ladder like this. Before we finish up with landscaping, I just have a couple of things to mention. First of all, if you're finding this helpful, it would let me know if you would leave a like. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and turn on the little bell. I will be releasing a new building video every single day this month. If you're here from the roofing tutorials, you will recognize this format. I am going to release videos like crazy for a month and then take a step back for a couple of months and then come back in January. I will continue this series in January if we can hit 500 subscribers by the end of October. I have a whole list of nearly 60 home styles that I'd really really like to bring to you guys. However, obviously only 31 are going to fit into October. So if you want to see the rest of the list, or if you have more homes you'd like to see, you can let me know by subscribing and then commenting down below if there's a particular style you're interested in. If you want to know where I got all the information about the Queen Anne style, all of that is linked in a Pinterest board which is in the video description below. You can find all my sources and of course if I make a mistake, don't hesitate to correct me in the comments, I have been wrong before. For the front yard, we're going to want to use some fencing, some flowers, definitely some sort of path coming off the stairs here, and for the back, that's pretty much just going to depend on what your sims need. If I search by Queen Anne again, we do find this little curved iron fence, which is just adorable. I'm going to use green and make a couple of little flower beds off the front of my build here. Isn't that cute? I'm going to start with some hydrangeas, which I think I'll use white. And while you definitely can landscape without move objects on and it'll turn out just fine, I highly recommend turning move objects on if you're at all comfortable with that. If you're interested, you can hit Control shift c and then type in bb.moveobjectson and you should get this confirmation message. You can also type bb.moveobjects and that should turn it on and off as well. Now it's back off, but I want it on. And now it's on. Make sure you get that confirmation message. If you do not get it, retype it, try adding the word on or off at the end and you should be good to go. And what that's going to let you do is just stack these flowers a little more closely together, which is really nice. And it lets you scoot it up a little closer to the foundation. If you're interested in more landscaping content, Little Man's favorite song is Hippopotamus uh, for Christmas, so that's what you're hearing in the background right now. If you're interested in more landscaping content, I do have a mini series of tutorials on landscaping both here on YouTube as well as on TikTok, just going over the basics of creating a landscaping area, how to fill it in and all that good stuff. I'm going to add a little bit of this for some filler. 
and I am holding Alt to get a more exact rotation, which you can do with or without move objects on. I'm going to add a couple of rocks and then fill in the rest with flowers. You can resize pretty much any object in the game by pressing the bracket keys, which is pretty great. Rocks do get pretty expensive, um, but they just add so much texture. Also, they can help your build blend into the world by selecting a rock color that matches your surrounding area. Now I'm going to add some flowers. And to finish it off, we'll use terrain paint. If you're new to terrain paint, just grab a nice dirt texture, move this up to about here. You might want to drop your brush size if you're working in a more detailed area, and paint away. Painted? Not painted. I really like how the brown helps lift the green off the grass. If you're going to be using terrain paint for a path, I highly recommend pre-painting it with dirt because then when you add your gravel or whatever on top, it's just going to blend into the edges so much more nicely than if it's just sitting on the grass like this. I also highly recommend using a little bit of terrain paint around the foundations of your build. Just like with the landscaping, it helps sort of lift the build off the grass and gives it a little bit more definition, almost like an outline. And if you don't want to add a path off stairs, just adding a little bit of mud coming off of it helps it look a little more used. All of the builds you see in this series this month will be available on the gallery, so you can either take a closer look at them, deconstruct them, or just use them in your own worlds. They will always be the style, or as much of it as I can fit in. Victorian was a little too long and shell. My ID is Sam and Bean. All this information is, of course, in the video description as well. And as long as we're here, here's a little sneak peek at what else is coming this week. Thanks so much for hanging out with us today. If you're interested in seeing more tutorials like this, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification. You can follow me on multiple social medias. Those are all linked in the video description as well as the Pinterest board with all of the links I did for the research for this video. You'll definitely want to click on the top card, especially if this is any day after October 1st, to check out the full playlist of all of these tutorials I've put together on this channel. And check out the bottom card for the playlist I have all about roofing. I know that this build is a little more roofing intense, not all of the builds that we're doing this month will have a roof quite like this. A lot of them will only be one or two pieces. In fact, this is definitely, well, any of the Victorians really will be higher on the complexity list there. But if you want to get a head start on your roofing skills, I highly recommend checking out that playlist. It's all just short little tutorials. I look forward to seeing you all back here again tomorrow for a cute little craftsman bungalow, and I cannot wait to see you there. Bye!